So this is a very interesting tag. I wasn't actually tagged in it, although the creator of the tag, uh, creators, creator of the tag, used me as an example. So I'll take it from that that I can do it. So I'm going to do it. Hello, everybody. Welcome to and welcome back to... Welcome to and welcome back. Welcome to, welcome back. Gosh, I messed up. I fluffed up my own opening lines. And now I'm on this uh, uh, kind of kick of not wanting to edit videos. I just have to soldier on. Welcome to and welcome back to my channel, Book Time with Elvis with me, Mark. And I'm here today with a tag, something you're not seeing that often these days on this channel. Whereas before, like in the early days, it was kind of the bread and butter of this channel. But uh, I'm here with the Civil War tag, uh, which I saw on another Bibliophile Reads' channel, Greg's channel. But it was created by Alan at Big Hard Books and Classics. Now, this is a Civil War, uh, the American Civil War tag, um, that was inspired by a trip Greg and Alan took uh, around Civil War sites in uh, Greg's home state of Virginia. I always find it interesting how um, Americans always just say the Civil War. Um, there are plenty. There have been plenty of other civil wars out there, you know. So, uh, and several before the American one. Uh, but they did say the tag could be adapted uh, to other civil wars, and in my case, of course, it would be the English Civil War. Uh, although I suppose to be correct, it would be the English Civil Wars. Uh, seeing as, uh, in theory, there were there was actually more than uh, one. Um, however, I'm going to try and do both together because, interestingly enough, we're not that obsessed with it in England. I don't think. I mean, it is interesting. The English, the English Civil Wars are interesting, but no way do we have the obsession that Americans seem to have for their civil war. And I don't know why, because in many respects, and I'm just guessing here, the, in the English Civil Wars were far more kind of revolutionary, really, because, of course, it led to um, the overthrow of a government and the execution by beheading of, of the king, of the head of state. So that's pretty radical. Um, yeah. So I don't know. I just I just don't know. The reason why maybe it's something that the American Civil War is that much more recent, perhaps. Maybe it's because of the kind of more tangible or more, um, what's the word, sensitive issues, perhaps, on which it was fought. Maybe gives it that kind of special kind of place in in uh, in the american psyche i don't know but anyway let's let's jump into this tag and give it a go so the first question is what's your favorite civil war novel well if i am taking the american civil war i haven't actually read many uh but one i did read was north and south uh which i always laugh because of course you've got north and south by elizabeth gaskell and i always like to imagine that that but you have um, North and South by uh, John Jakes, which I really enjoyed. However, I have to say, it was great. And I know it's a trilogy, but I only read the first one. But my favourite really has to go with Gone with the Wind. I'm sorry, I know it's controversial. But it is, in spite of its unpleasantness, it is a great story, you know. And uh, an important book, uh, you know, especially in the way that it shows... Um, you know, off the, the, the negative things and uh, whatnot. I think that's, although it's not the author's intention, but we can see and judge today how uh, horrible uh, and, um, what's the word, unpleasant uh, a lot of the stuff that's uh, lauded in that book actually is, of course. Now, I was trying to think of uh, novels set in the English Civil Wars, and that was quite difficult. I could only think of, uh, I think, if I remember rightly, The Children of the New Forest by Frederick Marriott. Um, but it's been so long, I couldn't tell you much. But it's one of the few that sticks out in my mind. I did think Lorna Doone, but then it was actually set in Monmouth's Rebellion, or around the time of Monmouth's Rebellion, uh, which is quite some time after um, the English Civil Wars. 
Then I thought perhaps um, Captain Blood. But then again, I think it's it's also set around the time of Monmouth's Rebellion. Uh, and I really struggled uh, to come up with something. And, and there aren't that many English Civil War novels around. So it's, it's, it's kind of interesting, I would say. Now, I did pick out two that I own, but I've yet to read. Um, I did start one, though, and it was excellent. I don't know why I didn't crack on. I must have just got distracted and sa saved it for a d another time, because I really love uh, Robert Harris, and I think he does some great books. But this is an English Civil War book, or a book uh, related to uh, the English Civil Wars, and it's the it's Act of Oblivion. And what that is, is, uh, well, I suppose, technically, it's more related to the Restoration, because... Um, what it is, is the act that is enacted to hunt down and destroy and bring to justice the so-called regicides, the people who signed uh, their names to the death warrant of King Charles I and um, were involved in his trial, conviction and execution for treason against the people of his nation. And this follows, uh, I believe, I'm not sure how many, I think two, 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 two of the regicides who flee to America and the uh, uh, manhunt to, to kind of track them down and bring them to so-called justice. So I must actually get on with that, but I'm sure if you like Robert Harris, you'll probably like it. I mean, I can't think of anything except perhaps, was it a book he did? I, I, but I haven't actually also read that. It's the only two I haven't read. Is it called The Third Sleep or The Sleepers or something like that? Which got a lot of really negative reviews and it put me off. But I, I should probably give it a go. But I, yeah, they're the only two I haven't read. But I think if you've read Robert Harris, he's always worth a go, isn't he? He's always worth a go. And another one is by another favourite author of mine, actually. And that's Daphne du Maurier. And she wrote a book called The King's General. And it's one I haven't read either. But apparently this is set um, during the Civil War can give you a bit of, uh, during the English Civil Wars, uh, give you a bit of uh, information from the back here. On her 18th birthday, Honor Harris meets Sir Richard Grenville. He is proud, reckless and captivating. They have a rare connection. And with her beauty and sharp wit, she intrigues him too. But days before their wedding, tragedy strikes and Honor must reconcile herself to life alone. Fifteen years later, war forces Honor to shelter with her sister at the Cornish estate of... Uh, Menabili. Ooh, Menabili sounds a bit like Mandalay, doesn't it? There she meets a Richard who has risen through the ranks to become a general serving King Charles I. With all of England in turmoil, honour must draw on her courage to save Richard's life and defend her country. So, yeah, I should probably give those a go. Um, if you can think of any more English Civil War novels so let me know in the comments below really because i'd be curious number two what's your favorite civil war non-fiction and i'm trying i'm racking my brains to because I, I i certainly have a lot of american civil war non-fiction i'm trying to think if i ever got around to reading any uh yet i wanted to have perhaps uh i might try and get some done for this quarter of historathon maybe uh which is from 1820 to the present day so that certainly fits in um but with regards to the, to the English Civil Wars, uh, one book that I uh, read a while back, uh, quite a few years ago, must be, well, certainly more than 10 years ago, uh, is a book by Michael Braddock called uh, God's Fury, uh, England's Fire, A New History of the English Civil Wars. And I remember that being uh, really good. And I'm sure I also read um, Lady Antonia Fraser's biography of Cromwell as well, uh, back in the day. Uh, which would also have been very good. I do, I do really like and enjoy her, her works. Um, now I do have a book that I will pencil in for next year's historathon, uh, which is again related to uh, the English Civil Wars, and it's called. It's quite new. It's called The Restless Republic by Anna Key, and uh, I can read the back of that for you. Uh, in 1649, Britain was engulfed by revolution. On a raw January afternoon, the Stuart King, Charles I, was executed for treason. Within weeks, the English monarchy had been abolished and the useless and dangerous House of Lords discarded. We can only dream. 
The people, it was announced, were now the sovereign force in the land. What this meant and where it would lead, no one knew. The restless republic ranges from London to Leith, Cornwall to Connacht, from the corridors of power to the common fields and hillsides, gathering a cast of trembling visionaries and banished royalists, dexterous mandarins and bewildered bystanders. Anarchy brings to vivid life the most extraordinary and experimental decade in Britain's history. It is the story of how these tempestuous years set the British Isles on a new course and what happened when a conservative people tried revolution. So, yeah, I think that would be great. So, can't give you too many favourites, but at least I can give you some possible ones. Uh, number three, they have what state do you live in? Uh, well, I don't, because I don't live uh, in America. Uh, however, I do live in Krola Rohardetsky, Krai, or state, uh, in the Czech Republic, and it would have seen action during a kind of proto-European civil war, I suppose, the Thirty Years' War. A lot of action happened here, um, and it was an extremely bloody and violent conflict. Uh, in the UK, I live... Um, well, I'm from the, the, the county of Surrey, um, but uh, my family now live in the West Country. Um, with regards to America, I suppose growing up in Bermuda, although not a state, it is part of North America. It did play a part in the American Civil War, primarily due to Britain's aiding uh, the Confederacy, um, not for political reasons, of course, but just to, I suppose, disrupt things a little bit. Because while America was busy fighting itself, Britain had free reign to go and do what it wanted. So um, I'm, I know that with regards to some of the blockade uh, runs and things like that, Bermuda played uh, a bit of a role. Number four, did you ever own a Confederate slash rebel flag? Uh, well, I did, but <laughs> before everybody jumps down in my throat, uh, it was not really the flag per se, but I did have... Uh, I think it was a Hot Wheels or a Matchbox toy when I was a kid of the General Lee, the car from Dukes of Hazard. Um, so, yeah, uh, in, in, a, in a roundabout way, I suppose I did, but believe me, there were no political connotations attached to that. Um, in, with regards to the English Civil Wars, uh, I don't know. Uh, if there's like, a, well, I suppose the, the Cross of St. George, perhaps, in which case I have owned them. Uh, it's a, a, maybe more of a symbol of Parliament uh, than, than uh, the monarchy. Uh, my own sympathies uh, with the English Civil War lie with Parliament and the parliamentarians. I have to say I am against uh, the, the so-called right of kings and ruling by accident of birth um had i my way perhaps uh you know the whole lot of them would have ended up on the scaffold maybe controversial i know but uh yeah who knows <laughs> how things would have turned out um number five how do you feel about confederate state memorabilia now with regards to the american civil war Honestly, one way or another, I don't feel too much about it because as an Englishman, it doesn't really bother me. I can understand. Now, I know this is probably controversial. I can understand perhaps the feeling of some you know, people within Confederate states that want to have that memorabilia in terms of just their, from, from like a personal, maybe family point of view, even though, of course, the connotations of it politically and with regards to the South's defense of, of, of slavery um, makes it, you know, um, more unpalatable, I suppose, for, for all of us. Um, but I, as I say, I can understand someone maybe wanting to keep memorabilia of their great-grandpappy or whatever, great-great-grandpappy, because, you know, it's family history. And, and you know, the, the general foot soldiers and whatnot, did they really fight for this kind of cause? Probably not. Um, you know, it's unusual, I think, that uh, in these things people just kind of fight to preserve, yes, their way of life, but, you know, the, the so-called poor white trash, as Margaret Mitchell calls them in Gone with the Wind and in other things, I mean, they wouldn't, have held slaves would they i mean they couldn't have afforded to they the, in, the status was probably in some ways um lower than some of the higher echelons of um 
of slavery. So if that's in your family, then, you know, I can understand maybe wanting a souvenir uh, of, of the part they played in that because they probably didn't have much choice really in which side they ended up on. Um, in terms of uh, other people, I think it's, it's a personal thing. You know, if you display it, if you have, I don't know if when it says here about Confederate state memorabilia, if it's if it's being uh, displayed as part of like um, a triumphal thing or a, or a commemoration on a on a on a government or a state government level, then I think you have to obviously question it now, of course, and say that it wouldn't be a good thing. But um, yeah, but on. on my level of course it doesn't you know apart from the obvious wrongs you know i'm english i don't have any connection really to the american civil war and what would it be i suppose in in the english terms i guess but it's hard to say isn't it because the winning side in the civil war ended up technically well i don't know you know, the, we still have a monarch. We still have a king. We still have King Charles. <laughs> so, you know, maybe not a lot has changed. We do, however, have the House of Lords back. Uh, so, in the end, did it change things? Yes, I suppose it curbed the power of the kings. But it's hard to say. It's not, not that controversial, perhaps, in terms of, you know, wanting to have memorabilia one side or the other. Uh, so, there we have it. Um, and then number six, how do you feel about the renaming of ships, military bases are after Confederate generals? Well, it's difficult, isn't it? Again, as an Englishman, I don't really have uh, a stake in it. Um, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I think it could depend maybe more on the personal character of the Confederate general. Um, and maybe any service they had rendered to the United States prior to secession, or even if, I don't know if any went on, um, you know, and, and, and worked for the good of the United States post the American Civil War, in which case there could be a case made for that, I think, one way or another. Uh, it depends their own, how strong their political views were in terms of you know, regards to the sensitive issue of, of uh, they felt how they felt about slavery and things like that, and if they weren't particularly a radical in 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 you know their their views and particularly racist, but they just did a job because they felt a duty to their state, but they'd also done good for the United States as a whole, then maybe yes. Otherwise, yeah, I suppose it's not very. Um, politically correct is it and uh, I can certainly understand why it may offend people uh, to have those things uh, named after confederate generals but as I say I'm not American in this respect I don't I don't think my opinion it probably even matters to some of you watching it uh, with regards to the English Civil Wars uh, well I, I, I you see the funny thing is again I mean it would be I don't know if we've had an HMS Cromwell you know, that could be interesting. Uh, certainly we have things named after Cromwell and prominent parliamentarians. Um, I mean, my favourite monument is the fact there's a statue of Cromwell, uh, the Houses of Parliament in England, in London, and that the monarch has to pass that statue when they go for the state opening of Parliament. And I think that is a typically kind of British thing where it just gives this kind of passive aggressive you know with threatening undertones reminder to the monarch not to get too big for their boots uh, and you know just to show you that uh, if you do you know you could lose your head <laughs> so yeah that's all I have to say on that but it's a great tag it's a, it's a bit of fun to do it. I'm, I'm not sure who to tag. Uh, if you've seen this and you want to do it, uh, whether you're American and you want to do, um, you know, the American Civil War, um, I suppose technically you could even do the Revolutionary War, couldn't you? Because it was kind of a civil war, wasn't it? Between different sets of Britishers. Um, you could do the English Civil Wars or any other civil wars, depending where you're from. A lot of us have had them, so 
there we go. Thank you ever so much for watching. Do take care, everyone, and see you all again soon. Bye for now.